All right, time to unbox. I bought this during the July summer deal where they were offering free shipping. So in Canada, that was about $150 saved in shipping alone. Now, the Prusa Mach 3 isn't broken. I still have it in functioning order, but I just kind of wanted another, hopefully better version of it because I got suckered in by all the advertisements, I guess. Oh, and one more thing. I assembled this one. It took a good 30 plus hours to do because I was a complete amateur and it's far from perfect, but it does function. If you see how much things I printed with this, you'll know that it's definitely a workhorse. From my estimation, I have about 4,000 hours of printing on this thing. This time I decided to buy the entire thing fully assembled already so I don't have to do it. This not only saves me a good 30 hours, I can also see how different it is between this one and that one. We're gonna do quite a lot of comparisons. The main one is to see how the print quality increases when someone who actually knows what they're doing assembled it versus what I did with the previous one. And also there's the whole entire thing about how this is just the upgrade for that one. We always get these every time I buy any piece of products. Oh. Oh, that's not the receipt. That's the test. Nice. And more stickers. Love the stickers. Oh, beautiful. Fully assembled, doesn't require anything else. I didn't have to take it out of a kit and build it myself. Oh, yeah. Galaxy Black. And I believe this is all the, uh, the other stuff. The stuff you needed to service it, basically. Well, that was a little different. Oh, well, no, it's the same. Yeah, it's about the same. A new wrench. I just pull this aside right now. And bed. Nice. Anything else in here? They gave me a generous amount of home. a box. Box in itself is kind of cool. Here you go, Aslan. A huge box for you. Oh, no, that's only this. This ball out. I like the Prusa Mark IV. And this is. It heated to the bed. Nice. Everything seems to be in order, I think. Let's take a look. Someone say that you are missing out on something if you decided to just buy this as a whole entire thing. And speaking from experience as someone who is a complete amateur when they built the first Mark III, I don't think it's worth it. It took so long and it was so much work that I, I'm not entirely sure it was a good idea to do it at all. And also, I'm pretty sure I didn't do the best job at it, is the other thing. So, you know, if those are out there and thinking about whether or not you should buy this printer completely assembled or assemble it yourself, I would say if you can, try to just buy it assembled. It's just not worth the headache, in my opinion. And there it is, my boys. I think we're ready. Well, that fan already sounds so different from my old one. English. A screen that has color. Never seen this before. Setup process. This doesn't sound like my Prusa Mark III at all. Is this how it's supposed to sound? Mine makes such a huge amount of whirling sound. What the heck? Oh man. It's gonna make me feel bad, isn't it? We will need your help with this test. You will be asked to tap the nozzle. Don't worry, it's going to be cold. Load cell test passed okay. Oh well, there's sound now, but I guess maybe this will be okay. I just feel bad at this point because this does not sound like my Mark III. You know, I kind of hope to be sounding at least a little bit similar. 
but this just makes me feel like I completely screwed up the build on that one. The gearbox calibration is only necessary for user assembled or serviced gearboxes. In all their other cases, you can skip this step. Okay, well, since we bought this as a whole, I'm just gonna skip. We need to start without the filament in the extruder. Please make sure there is no filament in the filament sensor. Unload. Yeah, okay. Oh, and quick tip, keep these. They're gonna be very useful in the future. Is filament in the filament sensor. Calibrating. Oh yeah, it's just calibrating the filament sensor. And we're done! Happy printing! Let's see what the new interface looks like. Okay, this is already really good. It makes it very satisfying to click. Info. Print statistics. Really good. Print time zero seconds. Excellent. Version info. Don't know how to read any of that. Nice. All right, and let me just detach this. And ooh, it even shows. Let's preheat this to PLA. I put the filament into the extruder and good enough for me for now. Go to print, G-code. And now you get to see it, which is excellent. And print. Interface looks so much cooler, I think. We're ready. There's like no noise here at all. I'm concerned about this axis going up and down because that did provide a lot of noise. But here's the thing, this is the Y axis or Z axis. The Z axis doesn't really get used except from just going upwards in small layers. It's not such a huge deal. Let's take a look at the technology behind the perfect first bed layer. Okay, I can't beat that. I have never calibrated my Prusa so well that it looks like this. No stringing either. That makes me think stringing was an issue with me and my printer. Ouch, but okay. Well, these are the first prints and uh, they turned out great. So yeah, just from the beginning, it's a couple of things to note. This is what printed with my Mark III. Tons of stringing everywhere. These new ones, barely anything at all. Like look at that. And this is not processed or anything like that. I didn't touch this at all. This was just there. Aside from the string, there's a few things to point out. The worst print of this piece that I've ever made, which is just an elbow rest, looks like this. And that's because the inner parts failed. It did not fail, everything's perfect. Now, normally when I do print this with my Mark III, I actually end up something like this. And when I end up with something like this, it's not bad, but if you pay attention to it, these supports are completely attached to this part. And that's because I think the calibration is a little bit off. But more so than that, I think the bed was just uneven. This portion is smoothed out than this part. I think the bed itself was much more higher on this part than this part. Um, not enough that it, you know, fails the print. The print still works. It's just that there's a lot of post-processing that needs to go into this to make this a working piece of plastic now. But with the new one, there's a distinct line all the way around for where the supports are. When I was using the Mark III, uh, these prints for the pinhole occluder heads always had printing errors. This looks ugly as hell and it is not completely round and that is not good enough for me to sell. So now, they work. This is a new print. A little tiny bit of stringing, but that is nothing. And also at the edges here, barely notice any type of drooping. This I am okay with selling. And that's pretty much it. This <laughs> wraps it up for the unboxing video of the Mark IV as well as the assembly and the first prints. So far after using this for a couple of days I have found that this Mark IV is living up to my expectations. I'm very happy with the purchase so far. It is a bit on the pricier side in terms of 3D printers but as someone who has used Prusa starting from the very beginning I do think this is a natural progression to those who might be familiar with the Mark III. I really gotta clean this. Small, much small dust particles everywhere.